Well, I'd like to redesign the statue and put a pencil right here. That would be appropriate. I'm going to turn this into a pencil sharpener. <laughs> no, this is, this is incredibly humbling. Um, the idea of being a legend. Last night I mentioned to my wife, you know, from now on you're going to call me legend, right? <laughs> Well, you don't kiss like a legend. <laughs> no, the um, and Linda was my inspiration for Ariel. Uh, she has this girl next door kind of a look, and actually, I use my family very much the way my dad used his family. It's just something he, dad always said: draw what you know, uh, put out there for the audience something that you have experienced, so others can identify with. And uh, it works. Uh, you have to be honest and open and take your life and open it up for the world. Uh, and it's an incredibly humbling thing uh, to see people respond uh, to the work uh, that I've done. Um, I love characters that believe the impossible is possible. I love animating a character that has this burning desire inside, uh, that believes that even though something is, is, is as crazy as a mermaid, thinking that she can one day walk on legs and, and win the love of that handsome prince or, or the beast, to believe that somebody could look deeper in, inside than his ugly exterior and fall in love with him, I mean, that, it's a fairy tale. And that seems impossible. But I think what makes Disney so incredibly wonderful is that it has the courage to put fairy tales out there and say, yes, this seems impossible, doesn't it? But it is. It is possible. And I know I live that. I mean, my portfolio, like we, we spoke about, went to this, the wrong school. And somehow, it was the right school, but I didn't choose it. And I do believe that the very best things in life are those things that we can't really earn but they're a gift. They're a gift from, from God, just at that right moment, it's given. And I went into the wrong school, supposedly. And I, I thought, well, animation, this is like a combination of all the arts. I'm gonna be an animator. And then I looked at Disney animation, and I, I knew I could never be able to draw like that. I saw Mark Davis's animation of Sleeping Beauty, and I just remember the exquisite lines and the beauty, and I thought, I, I don't draw like that. I, I kind of scribble. I, 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 I can't do that. And so my summer job, I, I thought, well, I know I can't work at Disney, but I'll, I'll work on uh, some Saturday morning show. And by the end of that summer, the boss said, um, Glenn, you're, you're going to go back to school, right? I said, yeah. I said, well, that's good, because if you weren't, I'd fire you because you draw like a three-year-old. <laughs> and at 19, I, I felt like I did draw like a three-year-old, but to have somebody say it, I was so, so disheartened. And, but something happened where I, I heard that Disney was training, and so I came in very sheepish one day into the halls of Disney Animation. I'll never forget the smell of the, those legendary halls. I mean, it, it had the smell of pencil shavings, cigarettes, and scotch. It was this wonderful, <laughs> wonderful artistic incense. <laughs> and I walked in there, and I showed my portfolio to Eric Larson, one of Walt Disney's nine old men. He's kind of a big, big belly on Eric, a respectable, grandfatherly type. I mean. When you have a big belly like that, you always have a choice. Where do you put your belt? You know, truck drivers have, have it down here. Respectful grandfathers hold that belt above the belt. And that was Eric. But I, I showed Eric my portfolio, and, and he started moving through these, looking for some potential, moving faster. Well, I spent three months on that drawing, and not somehow. All these drawings that I thought I, I put my heart and soul into, he found nothing. And then he stopped on this one little drawing. And I wasn't even going to put it in there. It was really <coughs> a scribble, just really quick. And he looked at that, and I thought, oh, I knew I shouldn't have put that in there. <laughs> now, 
they kept going all the way through. He backed it up. Can you do more like this? <laughs> you like that? I think there's something here. <coughs> there was just this fast little ink sketch, and I, I knew, well, that's what I do. I mean, that's me. I can, I can do that. He said, if you can do more like that, maybe we can work with you. And I, I came into Disney and started to work with these great mentors, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston, Eric Larson, Gord Kimball, Willie Breiderman, it's just great teachers. And bit by bit by bit, it grew. And really that impossible dream really did come true for me. Uh, and I am so thankful. It doesn't happen by yourself. When I saw that animation of Disney animation, and I thought, I can't do that. I was right, you can't do it alone. You need other artists around you. The directors that gave me the opportunities, the assistants that helped me, my mentors, my father bringing me up, the inspiration of my wife, Linda, and my, my children and grandchildren. Uh, I am so thankful, so, so blessed, and I just wanna say, long live Disney animation. Thank you very much.